What is kicking, guys? It's Josh with the Prop Productions back in Unreal Engine 4 with a second Minecraft style tutorial. And we're gonna start creating our terrain today. We're gonna use some blocks, put them together. We're gonna make one blueprint and put it on the construction script and have it set up here to where we can toy with the size of it and nonsense. So let's right click, blueprint class, actor, as always. And I'm gonna name it MC. You know what I'm talking about? Cause, Cause MC stands for Minecraft because I'm the real MC. Double click on it. Move it over here to our second window cause you know how we do, no add a component. It needs to be a block, right? Just a cube or just going to use cubes but the thing is we usually use static mesh you're going to hear static mesh we're going instead i want you to type in the word instance and you're going to see instanced static mesh now guys that's going to be a lot easier on resources okay a lot easier so that's exactly why we're going to use it and the thing is you're not going to see the block come up after we add it if i go here and i actually look for shape cube and that's i just usually type in the word shape and then if you scroll through here until you see cube boom there it is you won't see anything now a white material is fine the material's not important this time because we're just talking about how the way the the way the terrain generates okay but if you go back here, we did create our Minecraft tutorial or Minecraft material in the first tutorial. Feel free to go back and watch the, the tutorial, guys, and check it out. It's not very hard, but we did put it together just using stuff out of the starter content. But for now, we need to jump right into it. So I'm going to grab this Minecraft material we created in our last tutorial, and I'm going to drag it over top of that bad baby, and we're done. Now, the thing is, you don't have anything because it's an instance. So we actually have to add them in the construction script or the event graph before they'll even be there. So it's actually it's a lot easier on resources. Let's jump in. The, the construction script and get started. Now, the thing is, we're going to need a couple variables, okay? So let's add one, and let's make it an integer because we need a couple numbers. And I need a couple numbers because we need to decide the length and the width of our terrain. So that's exactly what we're going to name them. I'm going to name the first one length. I'm going to go do another variable. And since I changed that one to an integer, it knows to make that one an integer too. Oh, God. Width, right? We got width here, okay? And I need to go ahead and create one more, okay? And I'm going to name it tile size. Now, you're thinking, what, what what's going on there? And basically what's going on is I know, but I, and you probably do too, that the Unreal Cube is 100 by 100. And what's really cool is if you go to the cube itself, if I'm here in the, the, the viewport here and I go to my block, go to my block here and you, and you grab this bad baby. And I just, I, I do this, it kind of finds it in the, in the, in the, you click the magnifying glass, send you over here. You can see the dimensions over there. It's 100 by 100. I don't know if you can see that while I'm recording, but it is 100 by 100 by 100. And that is very important because that's going to be our tile size. That way they create themselves a hundred units away from the last one. Let me go ahead and show you. We're gonna grab these three eyeballs, okay? And I want you to type in for loop, okay? That's what we're gonna get right there. Now, the for loop is very simple. It's going to send out as many of these as we ask. First index, I'm gonna set it to one. And then how many do we wanna do? Basically one to how many? Well, we're gonna set this to length. So we're going to decide how many we wanna print out. You know what I'm talking about, okay? You see what I'm doing there? Now the thing is, we need another for loop, okay? Do the exact same thing, control C, control V, plug this bad baby in, one to width. Uh-huh, you see what I'm doing there? We're gonna have width and length and decide how long or wide each one is, you know what I'm talking about? Now the end all of this is if we grab the block, bring it in here, and if you literally just drag a line and type in add instance, you'll see add instance right here. That's, that's, that's the overall goal here, okay? The overall goal is right there, but the thing is we got a little bit of work to do, okay? We need to, we need to transform, we need a location, and we're gonna base this location off of this. Now, what's cool is we could do a make transform right now, but watch this, just type in make vector. Since that's literally the only thing we're gonna be messing with is the vector. Oh, I gotta find the letter M, guys. You gotta find that letter M, and if you can't find the letter M, you're in big trouble. Now, what's cool about this make vector is once we create it, we can just plug it into this. And it'll convert. You like that? You see what it did there? It's pretty sweet. But we need to create our vector on the X and Y only because we're not worried about the Z right now based off of these two bad babies. Well, now this is where we're going to take the index, which is this is one to length. And we're going to multiply it. So if you find the multiply button, which is actually a shift eight, you'll see integer times integer. And we're going to multiply that by what? Our tile size. And you're thinking, uh, what? Now the thing is, we're literally just taking this and multiplying it whatever number this is. Now it's probably going to be 100, but we're going to set it outside just to be safe. You know we need to do that again, guys. Drag it out. Uh, we can just control C, control V this bad baby. Plug tile size into the bottom of this one, okay? Plug the, 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 the one to width index into the bottom of this one. And boom, okay. Now we could set some notes or whatever. You could you could draw little boxes around or whatever. This is our length and this is our width, and it's multiplied by tile size. Okay. Now here's the thing: it needs to go in here, right? You're like, okay, well, I just I plug it in there. 
That's exactly right. You literally just put that in there and it's going to convert it from an integer to a float. You know what I'm talking about? We're going to do it one more time. We're going to convert it to an integer to a float. And, and, and literally, that's all we got going on. So th- look at that. We loop length and width, as many as we want, from one to whatever. And then it literally multiplies those numbers by the tile size and sets that to the location. So let's save it. And let's go back into our editor. And we don't have one. So we got to go back. We got to go find the DP folder again. Oh, there it is. I got MC. I'll drag MC in here. Boom, there it is. You're like, ah, I don't see anything. But I'll tell you what you do see. You see these three little numbers right here, don't you? Let's set length to one. Let's set uh, width to one. And tile size to one. Oh, you see a block? Okay. Now, the thing is, tile size one is not going to do much. If I said it, let's say I need like 15 blocks that way and 15 blocks that way. Well, look what it did. It just made the blocks a little bigger. But did it really make it bigger? No, dude. It's copying them over and over. So set your tile size to 100 and boom, you will have perfect size blocks. You know how, you know how I know that? Set it to 105. Create a, little, create a little spacing between your blocks. You can kind of see what's going on, okay? So there we go. We got our length. We can set to whatever we want. Let's set it to eight, okay? It's going from, from forwards to backwards. I got the, the back here, the front here. So length is this way. Width is this way. And I could set this to 35, bro, or 400,000, or whatever you want. There you go. So we're actually creating... Pretty much, we're using the length and the width now based off those for loops to kind of create a terrain as big as we want. I mean, I could just sit here and just keep... And they're instant messages, guys. They're instant static messages. So there's nothing. You know what I'm saying? You could just jump right in the map and walk all over these things. And then again, once you've set up the map however big you want, I'm going to go 75 by 75. I'm going to set the tile size to 100. And boom, they're all together, and we got a big old flat plane there. And we can change the size of it and do whatever we want. So pretty cool, right? We got a little start on it. But... We need to, we, it needs to be a little more interesting, right? You know, we got the length. We multiplied it by the tile size. Everything's got to be multiplied by that tile size because even the height, because that's what we need to toy with now is get it to go up. Now, there's a few, there's several different ways to do this, but right now we're going to work with a way I've kind of, I've, I've come to understand. What we need is two more variables, except this time, instead of an integer, I want to make it a float, okay? I want to make it a float so we can really toy with it. it later, it could be an integer, just letting you know, but we're going to name one, okay? And this, then we're going to double click on it so we can name it. We're name it, and I'm gonna name it frequency, okay? And I don't know how to spell frequency, so I'm gonna do the best I can, okay? Don't judge me. I'm doing the best I can. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna high, highlight the light, the little eyeball, plus one more time. And this is actually going to be our height. Yeah, I got the height. You get high. I mean, um, I, but what, what's going on now is you got the you got the make vector, okay? We're gonna plug everything into this. We're trying to adjust the height. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna grab this index, okay? And I'm going to go multiply. I'm going to get another multiply like we did last time. Let's grab another int times float, though. Okay, make our lives a little easier. Grab another one. Get two of them here. Get two of these bad babies so you can plug the length and the width into one. Okay, and let's plug bo- let's plug frequency into both. I can highlight it right there. I'm going to plug it right in and then drag the wire. So I'm taking the length and the width indexes based off how long they are, and I'm multiplying by frequency. And then what I want you to do is I want you to type in sine. Okay, I want you to actually type in sign, and you're going to see a couple different ones. Oh, up, up, make sure it's S I N, okay? S I N. You're going to see a couple here, okay? We want to go to sign degree, just like this. Boom. You see that? That's exactly what you're looking for. And you're like, what exactly is going on? Well, think about the sine wave as like an audio wave that goes up and down and up and down. We're going to use that up and down to make our terrain go up and down, okay? So you want to control C and control V these bad babies right there, okay? Now, after that, we want to keep on going. And like I said, make sure you got the sign degree because it was a sign degree and a sign radius. And now we need to multiply these bad babies together. That's as simple as we got the float. We got the float. We're going to float times float. I hold the little float button. But we need to do one more thing. I want you to add a, add a pin. You know what I'm talking about? And plug that height into there. You know what I'm talking about? We're going to plug this sign times this sine wave, this sine wave, multiply by the length and the width times the height and the frequency. Did you get that? Did that all make sense? But guess what we're going to do now? We're going to round it. We're going to make sure it's rounded. This is just us being careful because we probably should have been working with integers, but I wanted to really be able to toy with the frequency and the height. And then we're going to plug into the height, right? Wait, we got to get this bad baby right. We got to plug it into tile size. That makes sure it goes up by 100 because if it doesn't, if it do, or, or well, not even 100, just whatever the tile size is set to. Right now, we do have set it to 100. We're probably going to keep it there. But the point is we want it to be able to go up the exact same amount the length and width go long and wide. So but, but there you go. You got your, you got your frequency of your, of, of your um, sine wave, okay? And we're going to multiply by that, by that by height and then make sure it's all multiplied by the tile size. And you're like, what's happening? What are you doing? Just hold on. Just hold on. Check it out. We got this big old map here. I'm going to break up our tile size to 105 again so we can see all the cubes. Okay, we, got little, we got little cubes here. We can see what's going on here. Now, I'm going to set this frequency to 1. Okay? 
and you see nothing. I said, the height to one. Okay, wait a minute. Wait a minute, what's going on here? Did you just see what happened there? The height, we're going to keep it one for now, okay? Let's, let's see what we, if we add to frequency, we set it to two, we set it to three. We set it to four. Okay, you see what's going on. Now, my map is going down inside of the floor. So let's drag this bad baby up a little bit. Let's, let's drag it up. Let's, let's, let's bring it up a little bit. And it's going to take a second. There she goes. There she goes. Okay, let's do that. Get it, get it off the floor a little bit, right? Because it's going to go up and down. You know what I'm talking about? So this, this frequency, as you can tell, is kind of causing the noise on the X and the Y together. So imagine a wave going coming from both angles. So it's kind of doing this kind of cool thing here. And again, it's, 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 it's not anything super crazy, but you got like some heights, some depths. And if you have the material like we do, I mean, if you haven't made it, go back and make it, guys. It's so easy. You got this material. You got your little Minecraft little world. It's, it's got the little dirt blocks with the grass on top. And the thing is, now we can go back to the height and kind of toy with it. Maybe two maybe three. So I'm going to set this to six and I'm going to set this to four. Okay. And what we have now is we have a little, a little world that's got some, a little bit of, a little bit of life to it. Okay. It goes up, it goes down. It's, 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 it's a little patterny. Okay. At the moment, but this is why we're going to do two parts to this tutorial. Cause in the next part, we're going to randomize a little bit, but guys, this is all I kind of wanted to show you real quick. What's cool is with this, you can now go back and crank it up. I'm going to go 180 by 250. Because I'm not scared, and just boom, we got a giant map full of cubes here, and they're all together, and boom, we have a terrain, and you can kind of just see it. And again, it's not super, super random, but it is a bunch of blocks. They got all kind of dirt, and they're all kind of up and down and left and right. So we're kind of getting a start on how we can create a Minecraft-style world, or a block-style world, if you will. You know what I'm talking about, but it looks kind of neat. We, Like I said, I can F11, and flow around in this bad baby and have a little map. Bring your little character in here and have him run around. But we got a lot of work to do if we want to keep learning about how they do things on Minecraft. We got to take blocks away. We got to get blocks and, 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 and make this a lot more random. So we got plenty of work to do and plenty of stuff to figure out. But this will give you kind of a start. You literally, guys, just jump in, like I said, multiply your length and your width in a for loop from one to length index, from one to last index. Multiply them by the tile size, and there is your vector for your add instance. Make sure they're instant, instant cubes, instant. Static meshes, okay, and boom, I've created hundreds upon hundreds of thousands of blocks, haven't I? Thousands. I mean, just look at it. I mean, if I, I change it to like a one, 120, I set it to 120, boom, we can see it kind of separate, and it's going to take a second because there's all kind of blocks. I mean, uh, there's, a, there's all kind of blocks, guys. That's what's going on here. There are tons and tons of blocks, and it's really not that hard on the PC. You know what I'm saying? It's just really not. So, guys, thanks for watching. Appreciate you. This is the start, okay? We got a lot to learn, but this is kind of like a, a little bit of a, a first pointer of how we can, you know, simply use a sine wave to make your, make your blocks go up and down, up and down on the Z, and then, of course, using the four loops and the length and the width to make them go left and right and make the terrain as big as you want. We got a lot to discuss. Discuss. Guys, there's a lot of tutorials I need to make. I know a, a few of you guys have given me some cool ideas. I will get to them. I promise. I'm just, I'm just balls deep in it. Okay, that's what's happening. Balls deep. Love you guys. Miss you guys. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, Deprived Productions. Thanks for watching. Go hit the Deprived Productions Facebook page and go check out the Depri Deprived Capital D at the beginning, Capital D at the end on SoundCloud. Okay, because we got all kind of music on there. You can buy some of it. You can listen to some of it. You can use some of it for free. Just go check it out, man. Guys, thanks for watching. We got all kind of Minecraft stuff coming. I'll have another tutorial in a few days along with some other fun stuff that I'm getting ready to release because today we got something big going on. And I'm not going to tell you what it is. It's a secret, but I'll release it soon. But guys, I love you. I miss you. I'll see you next time. Keep doing Minecraft stuff. I'll have another tutorial in a few days. Until then, peace.